You ready for this? So you're on a shuttle to a coordinate with Bianca. I'll just summarize for you for this part because it's a lot of uh, description. <clears throat> Basically, you received the abnormal transmission from Antarctica. And Babylonia sent you to it as a high priority mission. And Bianca is with you. So she says, Commander, what's up? She could see your face. You look really stressed. You say, I'm fine, Bianca. And she says, if you if you have any issues, just just say it out loud immediately. If she uh she can uh she can sort it out for you. And you say, No, I'm thinking about the mission. And you say, Can you can you repeat the mission again, the mission details? She says, okay. So she uses her terminal so it's exactly as I said seven days ago the Arts Association received a unknown transmission from uh, Antarctica and they, they lost transmission with the, the team down there the expedition team <clears throat> yeah because the the, the the archaeology team it belongs to Arts Association, the branch. So they, they couldn't find out what what cut off the transmission. So you're sent to investigate. And they they've also sent a purification force just in case there might be a mutiny. So you're like, okay, I got it. So you see the details of the mission, the, the expedition team, their profiles, and their photos. So you're, you're noting that in the extreme cold, there's no punishing virus. And expedition teams are sent to these areas to see uh, how how to extract resources for humans to survive, like food and stuff. That's why it's important the board just send you and Bianca to check it out. <laughs> and but then you have a small question. Why, why were you chosen for this mission? And Bianca says, actually, uh, purification, for, uh, purification force movements doesn't, usually doesn't have a commandant. But this time, they need to make a judge, they need to make a call, a judgment, to see if the mission requires purifying, like killing people. And then, uh, the judgment of a commandant will be really useful. <laughs> and also because you have experience in the Arctic with Rosetta, <laughs> so you're the most fit for the job. And when Bianca finishes saying, and she says, the, this is the reason. So that's why I requested for commandant. And you're like, huh? You immediately doubted her. You're like saying, it, it doesn't feel like it's the full reason. Or you could say, it feels like you're just repeating what the command said about th this reason. So we could go with the first one. I feel like this isn't the real reason. Oh, seen through? 
<laughs> Bianca closes her eyes and falls into silence. She's like, that's right. This isn't all the reason, or should I say, the rest of it is personal. And you're like, personal reasons? She doesn't say again. She says, uh, if you really wish to know, <clears throat> uh, if it, if you think that this this would hinder the mission, I will do my best to to tell you. But you could say, we can say this one. It's like it's okay. Whenever you feel like you're ready, it, it's it's never too late to tell me. And over here you say that I I respect Bianca's decision, her her thinking. If somebody isn't willing to say, there's no need to force them. And also, it's not like Bianca is a shady construct. She has been through. A, she has a lot of experience and she, a reliable person. No need to doubt her. She says, "Thank you, Commandant." I'll find a perfect opportunity, I believe, to tell you. It won't take too long. And you say, I'll look forward to it. And then you say, looking at her, looking at her really relief. Uh, it looks like I made the right choice. And then right after that, Bianca says, <laughs> it looks like I've made the right choice. <laughs> she said the same, same thing. And she says, for this mission, I am pretty sure it'll go smoothly. And she says, uh, no, she says, <clears throat> the mission will go smoothly, is what I would want to say. But then she looks outside, it's like a blizzard storm. Really strong uh, storm. Snowstorm. So... You, you guys have no choice but to land your craft somewhere further and go by uh, transport, by the, the vehicle. <clears throat> uh, you say that uh, is, there's no turning back now, right? And Bianca says, that's right. Unless really necessary, uh, Purification Force mission will always carry on. So they'll have to land somewhere close. Yep, then that's what you're gonna do. So Bianca check check <coughs> checks for any abnormalities and she equips her sword and stands next to you. And she says uh, if it gets too dangerous, she'll request for the transport to send you back to Babylonia. <laughs> and you say are you worried that I wouldn't be able to keep up with your pace? And she say, no, it's just that. And you say, but I'm your personally, uh, I'm, I'm your, I'm the commandant that you personally chose. <laughs> with emphasis on chose. <laughs> and then uh, she, you, you, she stumped. And then uh, she lowered her head, and then she gets she smiled confidently. Of course, please forgive me <laughs> for my rudeness. Let's let's go, Commandant. So you land somewhere nearby. You use the vehicle, icy coal. So in the in the dark icy plains, you guys use your lanterns, uh, your flashlights. No, no, it's a light from the car. You haven't started walking yet. Later on, <coughs> later on, you'll start walking. So you can't see anything. Uh, 
Hey, Bianca says, Commandant, it looks like you wanted to say something. You could say, I didn't know that Bianca could drive so well, or can we arrive there with no issues? So we could go with the first one. Bianca actually a good driver. She says, it's a necessary skill for the mission. And she's familiar with this uh, weather. She's uh, she's dealt with lots of snowstorms back in the uh, day. And you say, is it a purification job? And she's uh, she shakes her head and said, no, even longer before, way before punishing outbreak, when she was still a nun in the church. And uh, the car started sinking. <clears throat> so you guys drove into a pothole. In the sludge. The slurry. So, Commandant, are you okay? No problem. She says, uh, it's my fault. I'm sorry. I didn't see the, the pothole. She says, even though her, her, her eyesight module is uh, enhanced, but the, the, the pothole is uh, concealed. She couldn't tell. So the car is stuck. And you say, it's not your fault. Say, so is there any way to get this out? She says, uh, to get the car out of the, the, the pothole, it's hard, it's difficult to do right now. It's about three three meters wide. And you say it looks like we have no choice but to walk. It's about two kilometers to go. To the the closest abandoned facility for shelter. He says, uh, Roger that. Well, we'll 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 retrieve the car later. This is Echo Arias title login screen. It's a remix of the main theme. If you remember the very first title theme of PGR, this is the cello remix of it. Really good rearrange. <laughs> so Bianca understands that it's the most logical choice. So you, you, you use a lot of strength to push open the door and climb out of the hole. And you notice that Bianca has a really grim expression, really stern expression. You say, Bianca, what's wrong? It's nothing. And after a while, after a pause, she opens her mouth. She says, I'm sorry, Commandant. If only I were a bit careful, this wouldn't have happened. So you, you can say, you don't need to blame yourself or everyone makes mistakes. So we make just a second one. And she says, but this is a mistake that I'm supposed to avoid. So, and she says, uh, for the remain for the next, next, uh, remaining moments, I'll, I'll take this time to atone, like a repent for, <laughs> reflect on myself. <laughs> and you say, in that case, as punishment, why don't you finish the story that you were telling before? <laughs> Too smooth. She says, before? You mean about my past? And then you can say, when you're listening to someone talking, their bodies will feel warmer a little. When you say this, it'll say that you made this up. It's, a, it's just an excuse that you made up. There's no scientific study to prove this. <laughs> And she's like, is that so? Understood, Commandant. If you really want to listen, I'll continue. So she says, uh, so when she's still a nun, 
every winter, she lives in the church, and they they get short on supplies. But because the church is so far away in the mountains, uh, delivering uh, transporting the supplies is difficult. So Bianca would use a horse-driven carriage to get the supplies. And she says it's different from driving. It's not like you can step on the accelerator and it speeds up. You, you need to uh, take care of the horses. And then you can see that Bianca smiles bitterly. You can tell that she, she's she been through a lot. And she says, however, once you get used to it, the snowstorms are nothing. And then when she noticed her current situation, she lowers her head. And then uh, it's because of her complacency that this incident happened. And then uh, you say, and she she's she's uh she's second guessing herself for getting you to join her on the mission. <laughs> and the first one says, "If I don't if I didn't join, I wouldn't have been able to he hear Bianca's past." <laughs> the second one is like, "This isn't you're not supposed uh, you shouldn't question it." <laughs> the first one is so smooth. And she says, you care about these things? And he say, uh, you say, perhaps your mission would have gone even more smoothly by yourself. But right now, it's the two of us, with emphasis on two of us. And it says, uh, when one, per one person makes mistakes, the other person can correct them. If one person couldn't make it, the other person could uh, pull them up. If one person uh, couldn't see where to go, the other person could help them. Uh, no, if one person has a... Uh, per the other person can offer a different perspective. Bianca says, you're right. I shouldn't consider what, what would I do if I were alone. Because right now, it's different from before. It's different from back then. And she says, it's different because I have you by my side. And you say, that's right. That's the that's the way to go. <laughs> it's like, all right, let's continue. <laughs> you think this is good? It gets like 10 times better later. So you, you trudge on and it feels like a test and every time you couldn't every time you couldn't uh, take it anymore you couldn't carry on anymore Bianca would always be there to, to to hold your hand to pull you ahead and you can feel her her unmovable unshakable resolve when you grab onto her hand After a long while, you arrive at the shelter, abandoned facility. She says, we're here. And your the light on your, uh, your suit illuminates the facility. And she says, how are you? Are you okay? Still okay? This is like no big deal. And this is like, I'm at my limit. Let's go with the second one. And she says, you need to rest right away. Just hold on a little, and I'll check if it's safe. And then she pushes open the door and checks around with her sword. It's safe, there's no punishing. No no signs of virus, punishing virus. We can stay here uh, until the storm subsides. And you're like, okay, let's do that. And it says uh, the facility has been abandoned a long while since the Golden Age. And 
it's been used as a shelter now for people. So when you open up, lots of dust, and <clears throat> it says that the power isn't working anymore, but because it followed the strictest architecture, the strictest, strictest architecture back in the day, the foundation still holds in the building. Still uh, sturdy. So... The both of you... <laughs> so this is the good part. The both of you went to the most confined space to reserve body temperature and you set up the sleeping bag facing each other lying down facing each other in the most confined room so that your body temperature can uh, be preserved yeah over here it says to preserve body temperature you lie you lie down, both of you lie down and face each other. So under the night, in the dark you can see uh, Bianca's uh, green eyes. And <clears throat> Bianca uh, uh, laughs, silently laughs. And you say, what, what's up? She says, it's strange. <clears throat> Back then, in lots of missions, they would have to camp in places that they had to protect. But this time, uh, doing it with someone else, <laughs> it's her first time. First time camping out with someone else. Because all the time she did it, it's always alone. And now it's with uh, Commandant, her first time. <clears throat> and she says that I feel like uh, my uh, her mood may have changed a little. And you say, who knows, you might get used to it. She says, oh, you say it, you might get used to it next time. And she says, next time, huh? <laughs> so this is actually a hint. When she says this next time, it's because that she knows that she's purification and you're a task task force. Like your your Grey Raven uh, team, it belongs to task forces, and purification is different. Like you know how you never really cross path with Bianca because you both of you are from different uh, types of missions. That's why she's doubting whether there'll be a next time. Oh, and this part she says, Commandant, please <laughs> give me your hand. <laughs> she suddenly says this and she already reaches, reached out with her hand. And she says, by touching your skin, she can track your heartbeat and your temperature. Especially when you're asleep. When you're asleep, she can track your temperature. <laughs> and you're like, do I really have to? Or... I, I... Okay, I know. So let's go with the first one. Do I really have to? <laughs> she says, Commandant, please. Your hand. <laughs> like, in pauses. <laughs> and it says that... She was actually smiling before, but the next time it felt like you're unable to refuse because there's some sort of threat. You feel that the threat. <laughs> and so you worry for yourself, so you reach out your hand. It's like, okay. So you obediently reach out and your hand touches Bianca's hand. Like palm to palm. And she says, and that this is fine. And she says, in that case, 
in order to preserve your energy, uh, to make sure that you have the energy. Good night, Commandant. And then uh, once you once you listen to her, you fall into sleep really fast. When uh, you 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 drift off to sleep way faster than when you uh, slept in Babylonia in your dorm. Speed run sleep, slept like a baby. And then uh, you you sort of feel that a different feeling on your hand. So Bianca actually Bianca's fingers went through your own hand and clasped your hand. <laughs> it's like super hand holding. Yeah, at first it's palm to palm and then her fingers just clasp your hand. And then you can feel that it's it's cold and it's also uh, firm. But uh, you feel a warmth from it, like r reassuring. So good, right? That's only like the second one. The third one. Once you wake up, Bianca is no longer by your side. And uh, she comes back. And she says, uh, you're awake. Good morning, Commandant. Good morning, Bianca. And she says, the storm has already subsided. No more storm. So yeah, it's clear now. And she says, uh, I didn't think that it'll subside so fast. Uh, I w it, it wouldn't change our, our mission our progress and she says uh, she used she made a simple breakfast for you using the frozen food and cut uh, cutleries but uh, you'll have to eat uh, in the vehicle and you're like vehicle and you notice that Bianca already retrieved the vehicle when you're while you're asleep she say, yeah. She says, uh, when you haven't woken up, I, I spent some time to retrieve the vehicle. Took about one or two hours, and it's for a for a construct. It does. It, it's not too long. And at this point, you notice that there's some snow on Bianca's hair. It should be when she was uh getting the vehicle back. Oh, and this one. You reach out and brush the snow off her hair. She's like, Commandant? He's like, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to... I forgot to, uh, tend to myself. And you say, you could have called me for help. And she says, I did consider that. But looking at... Looking at how soundly you slept, I didn't want to wake you. She says that uh, you you've already spent a lot of energy last night, so you should uh, you should rest up. This sort of work is fit for a construct, so you need to uh, reserve your energy. <laughs> and she says, after all, it's the two of us, right? With the emphasis on two of us. Then <laughs> you're like, you're right. And she says, all right, let's head up. So you start the car and this is what Bianca prepared for you. She prepared a corn, corn soup. 
for your breakfast. So you're you're um, you're marvelled by the the scenery in the Antarctica. It's like uh, no virus, no war. Great scenery. <laughs> and now Bianca says, "Commandant, there's still coffee here, even though it's instant, uh, instant, like three in one." And she hands you a thermos with coffee. Look at that good wife. She hands you coffee with her free hand while she's driving. <laughs> you say thanks. Now, uh, she says, Commandant, get ready. There's less than a kilometer. We're reaching our destination. Yeah. <laughs> and then you nod your head. So you finished uh, the last spoon of... Uh, the last sip of uh, corn soup. Bianca opens the door, and then you head out, and you say, uh, we can start walking from here. She says, understood. Bianca gets her weapon when she alighted the vehicle. You start, you, you load your, your, your gun. And then you stay close to Bianca. So you you you're close to the the research facility, the main gate, and then you can hear uh, you can hear people talking from in, from the inside, <laughs> and then this guy says. So that one of the voices says, in that case, I'll activate my mutiny, with emphasis on mutiny. A revolution. And Bianca's like, Revolution? <laughs> revolution. <laughs> and then she uses her her weapon and busted down the door. Like the door the entire door just flew off. <laughs> and then she goes in and she says, Everyone drop your weapons. <laughs> and Bianca based on all her experience in purification force this is how she would uh handle the situation <laughs> and then uh, one of the research guy was like all of your all of your points will be reversed from and he's like what the fuck what's going on <laughs> and everyone's like really shocked <laughs> and then uh you could tell that they were actually just playing cards. He was holding like a... Like a spade. They're just playing cards and Bianca's like, what's... What's going on here? <laughs> like Bianca's like stunned. <laughs> and and this, this girl is like, y you're... You're from... Uh, you're the people sent by Babylonia? And Bianca's like, this is the purification horse. And we're here for... And she she didn't want to finish. And then she took a step back. To make... to She took a step back to make you appear to them. And she says, Commandant, maybe you should explain. <laughs> because... When people hear purification squad, purification force, they would be terrified of the of the name. Because 
even if they didn't do anything wrong, just hearing it, they would be scared. Like if they did anything wrong. So Bianca and you exchange looks and then you nod your head. So you explain to them. <laughs> and he's like, mutiny? How could that be? And they say, w w the group of us have been here for so long that uh, our our frames are for research. We don't have the power. We don't have the capability to, for a mutiny. And Bianca's like, uh, but Babylonia received a suspicious transmission from Antarctica. And he says, transmission? Hold on. Are you talking about could it be? And then they, they exchange looks and they, they mutter among themselves. And after that, the one guy that looks like a leader, he stepped forward and he says, I'm sorry. I'm, my, my apologies. Looks like there has been a misunderstanding with Babylonia. Regarding this uh, situation, I think I may know what, what happened. And he says, it's too troublesome to tell you, and it's easier to show you. So would you follow us, and uh, we'll show you. Bianca says, uh, Commandant, what do you think? And it says here, although this is a purification mission, but Bianca handed... Bianca, let me call the shots. Uh, based on my own judgment. So you say, all right, lead the way. <clears throat> so you you also agree that all of the exped expedition people, their frames are really old. It's like early versions. And they don't seem to have any weapons. So it's unlikely that they would have done a mutiny. And even if they, if they did, someone like Bianca would, they, would have been able to take care of them. So, you that's your judgment. And the leader says, understood. So you had to... Head to the garage. So... You're on the driver's seat. And the leader is sitting next to you. And behind... Behind you are the the expedition team, and behind them is Bianca, <laughs> just in case they they did anything funny. <laughs> so they started the car, and then it's like complete silence. <laughs> There's a really tense atmosphere. <laughs> it's like a. To them, maybe that maybe if they did something wrong, Bianca would just take their heads. <laughs> That's how people see purification force. They're really scared of them. So you try to ease the tension by saying, uh, "So after Babylonia was established, were you guys? Have you guys always been here down here?" And he says, "Ah, to be." To be precise, it's after Arts, Associ Arts Association was established. Uh, the archaeological team of Arts Association. But he says, uh, however, our job has not much to do with arts. So we don't really... We, we don't have much uh, in common. Because uh, their job over here is to monitor changes in the the earth, how it affects the environment. Uh, yeah, uh, they they check on the, the organisms in uh, in this place, how, how they can efficiently harvest supplies for humans.
So they say that we understand that our job has nothing to do with fighting against punishing. That's why we try not to put more trouble to uh, the, the rest, everyone else. So they're actually really good people. So a lot of them have never went back to Babylonia anymore once they were sent down here. And he says, uh, it feels like it feels like Babylonia has forgotten about us. Haha. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's what that, that's what he said. <laughs> and Bianca says, regarding this, I can assure you, Babylonia has never forgotten about you. <laughs> Bianca just interrupts him. <laughs> and she says, uh, when we received your transmission, the command post immediately set this mission as highest priority to investigate. And we were uh, we were sent down here not to purify, but to check things out. And you say, we would never leave our brethren behind. And he's like, huh, is that so? And he says, I don't know if you're just trying to patronize me, but I feel really relieved when I hear this. <laughs> and this guy's like, hey, aren't you the commandant of Grey Raven? And he's like, you recognize me? And, like, and this girl's like, hey, uh, the moment you stepped into the house, we already recognize you. Every month when there's a bulletin, when uh, Babylonia releases a bulletin based on the latest combat uh, battles, we all we always saw your photo and your name, the commandant of Grey Raven. And he says, oh, even though we're we're really far away from punishing, but we're, we still follow the affairs for the war between humanity and punishing. It's, uh, he say we although we follow the news, it's just that we don't know whether uh, which of which are real, like real news. And I never thought that what I I would witness in uh, the legend in person. <laughs> the legend he uh, talking about you. He he never thought that they would come where he would see the person in legend. <laughs> and you say you can say. I'm not as OP as you think or you could say I didn't uh, all those things I didn't achieve them alone <laughs> you could say I'm not as OP as you think <laughs> and when you say that and uh, once they once they confirm your identity the expedition team were really excited uh, so <laughs> this, this girl says I heard that you were in the the defense battle in Kowloon? How, 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 how wide was the front? And it's, it, it feels like it's not just Babylonia and other people as well. And also the, the Pulia forest park, the battle in that forest park. And, and this guy's like, is it true that our latest frame can absorb punishing? When I read that, and it's also uh, somebody called Karenina uh, managed to settle something on the moon. <laughs> so as you, ch you as you chat, you've already arrived on a destination. This is oh no, not. <clears throat> The, uh, the next checkpoint. So you see uh, this arch, lots of uh, lots of frozen lakes. And then you, you, you reach the wharf. 
And there's a ship. All right. Now for the third one. No, wait, for the fourth one. So it's an icebreaker. It's an icebreaker ship. Full of, uh, full of marks. And Bianca says, uh, an icebreaker from the golden age. Uh, is this what you wanted to show us? And he says, uh, that's right. Uh, the people that were stationed here, they, they found, they found this. <clears throat> and they, they wanted, their objective is to repair it so that the ship can set sail again. And he says about half a month ago, they found this ship on the wharf. So <clears throat> he says that uh, there there's no traces of punishing, but there are a lot of, lots of dead bodies in the ship and signs of uh, blood, traces of blood and bullets. So it could have a, a, a large battle could have ensued in the ship before. And he says uh, we're not sure what happened in the, on the ship. But uh, this is a rare opportunity. We, uh, if we could, we, if we could only restart the ship, uh, we could. Uh, it'll be like we can relive, re relive the golden age. So the expedition teams are really keen on repairing the ship. So you you say. Uh, so what what is it about that transmission? And he says, uh, if I remember correctly, a few days ago, one of the engineering people were repairing the the radio, and it accidentally sent a signal. So it might it might have been that, and Babylonia received it. And we, we're not sure what the content of the signal is, the, the transmission is. But since you, you guys are here, I may have a or uh, I may have a guess. So that signal was about like a, a fight. That's why they sent purification force down to check check it out. So you see dead bodies, bullet marks, signs of battle. And he says, uh, of course, we immediately uh, set up an emergency contact with Babylonia. Yeah, so they, they quickly set up the a contact to Babylonia and just as you arrive, uh, when you when you broke down the door, they were they they were finished telling Babylonia about this misunderstanding, and they were just about to slack off by playing cards until you broke the broke down the door. <laughs> and you're saying, so does that mean that our mission has been for nothing? <laughs> Bianca's like this. <laughs> Bianca didn't know what to say. She just went silent. And then you received the transmission. You and Bianca received the incoming transmission. You say, sorry, please give us a moment. And then you and Bianca walk away. And you talk to Babylonia. And you confirmed it with Babylonia. That it's just a misunderstanding. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it looks like what the expedition team says is true. It's all a misunderstanding. And Bianca says, however, we, this is still a good thing. And this is all thanks to Commandant. And you say, but I didn't do anything? <laughs> and Bianca says, uh, earlier on, about the the mutiny, the revolution part. It's thanks to your... She says that usually for purification, they wouldn't trust gut feeling over facts like what they see. So Bianca could have actually killed them all, but it's thanks to you that she didn't. <laughs> it's thanks to your judgment. So <clears throat> they say that everybody right now, all the expedition team really want to see the the ship to set sail again. And you say this may not be for for nothing. And Bianca says, if if the command post was slightly slower by uh, in giving them the mission. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have been able to witness this wonder. So it's a good thing that they came down here by accident so they could see all this thing. All of these. And you say, if only, if only I could have come down here during my vacation. Or if it weren't for the mission, I would have come down here to take a look. So I will go with the first one. Bianca says, uh, during the golden era, uh, lots of people would have come down to Antarctica for vacation. And, Bianca, uh, and she says, uh, or perhaps, strictly speaking, there are no other places uh, that would have a, a scenery like this place. And Bianca says, wait for command post to give, to assign a vacation for you. And I'm sure they wouldn't uh, reject if you, if you wanted to come down here for your vacation. Oh, and you say, wouldn't you come? Bianca's like, me? <laughs> Bianca's like, let's not talk about our... Let, let's first not talk about our schedules. And she says, uh, I'm a... As a purification force, I shouldn't. And... Uh, I shouldn't... Uh, we shouldn't interact with task force... Commandants of the task force. Like private interaction because purification force kills. Sometimes they kills a uh, kill task force that de defect. So it's better to stay uh, professional. And Bianca says the mission this time has already been really special. After this, we will have less. Uh, we would we will be interacting much lesser. Expedition's like, hey, you too. So, how is it? Have you guys spoken to Babylonia? You say, uh, I finished reporting. 
He's like, I'm sorry for making you run around for nothing. And Bianca says, uh, it's okay. Being able to confirm with my own eyes, that's, that's the most important. And she'll have to do a lot of paperwork for all the the resources spent for this mission for nothing when she returns. And and now this guy says, speaking of which, I actually have a request. And he, he rubs his hands and looks at Bianca. Looks at you and Bianca. And he says, actually, it's been st storming these few days. And most of our peep, uh, our our group has been damaged since their frames are old because uh, they've been they're running short of supplies because they use their supplies to fix the ship and to wait for the next uh, transport it'll be like uh, about half a month for the next transport to come for supplies and he says. Uh, and also, it happens to be the most busy period for their job. <laughs> so he says, So, if you guys have the time, do you want to help out? And Bianca's like, Are you asking us to, as ex to work as external helpers for the uh, ex expedition team? And you, you say, isn't that a good thing? And she's like, commandant? And you, you're like, hold on, let me... Let me re request, send a request. And before Bianca could object, you already asked uh, Babylonia, the command post. And the command post agreed that you and Bianca could wait until the next transport plane which is in two weeks. This is a set. This is a setup. Two weeks with Bianca, while you guys help out. And you're like, so what do you think, Bianca? She says, uh, I don't have the necessary expertise, but and what I can do will be limited. But if you guys don't mind, then. Commander and I will be more than happy to help you. And he's like, really? I'm actually, I, I, I'm actually just asking to see uh, if it's worth the shot. You guys will be a great help. And you say it looks like uh, an opportunity. The opportunity isn't that hard to find. Because what Bianca says is, uh, next time, uh, and our there will be less opportunities to meet. And now you're saying uh, it looks like the opportunity is not that hard to find. And Bianca's like, "Commandant, you're so bad." <laughs> you're like, "Sorry." And you're like, oh, perfect. Uh, why don't we go up to ship and take a look? We're gonna set sail soon. And you're like, have you guys already repaired to that, to that level? And he says, yeah. Uh, although the damage isn't serious, and with everyone's help, with an advice from uh, engineering, uh, it's able to start again. Although it can't go far, today's just a test run, but it's worth uh, it's worth remembering. So why don't you join us? And you're saying, okay, this one's like, wanna come along, Bianca? She's like, okay, I'll I'll be troubling you guys. So you're on a ship with Bianca on the icebreaker. So after after talking with the the captain, you go on deck and you see Bianca standing alone, silently, looking in the distance. 
And you say, it's less... <coughs> it's less... Rowdy compared to... The Niner from uh, Nona Ouroboros. But uh, the view is un uh, the view is unique. It's a really pretty view. Because like Commandant, when she notices you, she 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 bows to you, and he says, uh, <clears throat> "The expedition team has uh, decided on a name for this ship." They're gonna call it the Lantern Bearer. Bianca's like Lantern Bearer. Uh, that's not a bad name. Uh, it's like a uh, finding, exploring. Uh, like Lantern Bearers that explore in this world. She thinks it's a good name. And then before she could finish, <laughs> she notices the. The tracer equipment on her hip, the lantern thing on her hip, and you say exactly as you thought. <laughs> and she says, although in reality this isn't really a lantern, but may I ask, why do you want to do? Uh, why why do this? And you say, don't you think it's? Uh, didn't you say it was fitting? <clears throat> and you say, uh, they they have actually thought about this when they gave the name. And Bianca says, I don't really understand uh, w what they were thinking when they named it Lantern Bearer. But if that this is their decision, then I I won't question it. And then you say, uh, it could be that. It's because it's on Bianca that they realize that it has the same qualities, the same uh, same vibe. And Bianca says, if only they know about purification, uh, purification squad, like what what they really are, they wouldn't think this way anymore. And then you say it's because that they ne they've never seen purification squad how they work, and their their intentions are more pure. Like they they see Bianca as a person, not as a person from purification. And she's like, is that so? <clears throat> uh, I don't. Uh, Bianca says I don't feel like I'm somebody worth being learned from, being remembered. And she says, uh, when, or, or should I say, when I chose this path, I don't need to be remembered by people. And, but she says, it's strange. Uh, I never thought that uh, she would be. Uh, and she looks at you. And she says, "I, I am very happy. She, she feels blissfully happy." And you're like, "That's right." And you take out something. And she says, "Is this a camera for expedition purposes? Observation camera? It's a camera." And she says, "It looks like it's different from the usual cameras." And Commandant, do you know how to operate this? And you say, uh, when I was talking to the the member earlier, they they taught me how to use it. Because the next thing, uh, what's coming up next is gonna be our first observation that we need to record. And you point in the distance. And you see an iceberg. A newly discovered iceberg. And if it weren't from the icebreaker, you wouldn't have been able to discover this. 
So the expedition team has left this important moment to you and Bianca. They left it. They left it in your. Uh, they they gave the honor to you to take a picture of the iceberg. So you remember the saying about tip of the iceberg? So you couldn't imagine if this is only like one eighth, one eighth of the iceberg, you couldn't imagine what happened, what it would look like for the remaining seven eight. And then you turn around to face the, the blonde construct. She's also looking at the iceberg. And this is the part it says uh, uh, Bianca do you want to press the shutter together pressing the camera shutter together she says okay so she gets closer to you and your palms overlap as you press the button together to take the photo. And you think to yourself that this wouldn't be the last time. He says, uh, one day, eventually, one day, you the, uh, will be together, something like that. It's like suggestive. Together, we'll go see the, the wonders, the secrets of the world. The end of the, uh, at the end, ends of the world. Thanks for the sub, GK, Sari Dion. Look, it's only the fourth one. Now for the fifth one. So it says here Antarctica. To most people, it's a piece of land that is uh, cold and silent. Uh, it, it's not the it's not the right it's it doesn't uh, represent the truth and it says uh it's been one week already it's already been a week with Bianca <laughs> and look at this part it says because the dorms in the the research, uh, the expedition dorm is only two people configuration. They only have two people configuration for their dorms. So after, and in order to save space, and with Bianca's consent, you share the dorm with Bianca. <laughs> so you and Bianca assist the expedition team with their work. But uh, it's like simple work, like recording, monitoring. And... <clears throat> You, you feel exhausted by all the work. 
It may be more exhausting than uh, commanding, uh, commanding for a mission. And now Bianca says, "It's time to wake up, Commandant." She gently shakes you. She shakes your arm. <laughs> and she says, I At this rate, we'll have to settle the breakfast on the car, in the car again. <laughs> and this is you just talking shit. You're like, I need to adjust. I need to adjust a bit more, like your mission. <laughs> you just want to sleep more. And she says, uh, Commander, earlier uh, in the first place, wasn't uh, you're the one who said that you wanted to help the expedition team, right? They entrust us. They trusted us so much uh, with their uh, with the job. So we we should treat the we should treat the job seriously. And Bianca speaks really sternly, and then she she goes back to normal again. At first, she, she speaks in a stern voice, and then she reverts, and she says, "However, if you're not feel if you think you're not feeling well, then you should just rest in a." You should just rest here. I'll I'll follow the schedule for today and finish the work. And you're like, no, I'll I'll get up now. <laughs> I'll get up right now. <laughs> and you say, no matter what people, no, no matter how you say it, I'm still a I'm still a very experienced commandant. <laughs> just because of something like a. a uh, just because I don't feel like doing it, I would I I can't put the I can't put Faust Faust Academy and the Task Force people to shame. <laughs> Their pride is at stake. So you get out of bed, you wash up, and you you get out of bed, you wash up, and you enjoy the breakfast made by Bianca, and then you get on the car with her. And you move to the destination for today. And you ask, uh, what what are the expedition people doing today? And they're mostly doing the tuning the icebreaker and gathering meteorites. They like meteorites. It's like that's right. There are lots of meteorites in uh, Antarctica, and people use it to study, study space. And you say, even though it has only been a while, but Bianca has already done a lot of homework. And without before you know before you know it, she or, she's already an expert on the subject of uh, Antarctica. <laughs> or it may be that it's it's her interest. And e even the expedition team are surprised at her speed. And <laughs> you say, I remember. Weren't al didn't aliens made uh, their base? Didn't people say that aliens made their base here? <laughs> and he says, yes, that's right. That's what people used to talk about. But uh, in during the golden era, people didn't get any transmission from extraterrestrial beings. So she says, uh, we could so for now we could just put all this to rest as a uh, fiction. And you say, what if they're real? Wouldn't that be fun? And Bianca's like, if it's real, I don't think it'll be fun. It'll be called fun anymore. If there really is aliens, 
there it, it'll be like the punishing uh, uh, it'll be different from what you think so <clears throat> you uh you remarked that ever since Bianca shed her purification identity to the expedition squad and due to her demeanor, the way she talks to people respectfully, she instantly became more popular than you. She became more popular than the legendary commandant <laughs> and you feel salty about it. <laughs> you feel salty but you feel happy for her. He says, uh, and today we should we should go and uh, monitor the organisms in Antarctica. She says, uh, monitor organisms in Antarctica, and you say you're referring to, <clears throat> and you can only think of one thing: black and white, and it waddles and it would slide on their bellies. Penguins. And she asked Commandant, what's wrong? Uh, what happened to your eyes? Did some snow get in? And basically, you, you got so touched that you, you witnessed penguins in real life. Because all of this, usually you, you study in Babylonia. You would never see what a penguin look like in real life. And now you finally witness one. <laughs> so you feel really touched. <laughs> and you feel envious that the, the penguins live a blissful life away from punishing, the changes caused by punishing. And Bianca says, uh, based on their appearance, these must be emperor penguins. One of the largest types in Antarctica. So Bianca says, uh, we shouldn't disturb we shouldn't disturb them because it's their hatching mating season where the where the group would go finding go find food and they take care of their eggs so Bianca says uh, we shouldn't disturb them but we need to record this Uh, record on how how the environment changes affect uh, their migration migrational patterns and you say if I get closer it should be fine right she says uh, I think as long as you're not disturbing them and since penguins have no natural predator and they're not afraid of humans to them, you probably look like a uh, like a, their brethren, like some some stray brethren to them. And it's this is their resting time, so stay si uh, walk tread tread lightly and go closer. And you say, I'll be in charge of the taking the camera. And then uh, you slowly shuffle closer and Bianca is also following behind you. And just as you were about to get into camera range, there's a really loud cracking sound that came from behind you. <laughs> and it's Bianca. Like even though her, her frame is designed for stealth, 
but the designer probably didn't factor in frozen legs, so Bianca's frame crit made a really loud noise. And Bianca, cl <laughs> Bianca closes her eyes in shame because she was the one who said to tread lightly and she was the one who made the loud noise. <laughs> She's like, I'm sorry, Commander. I screwed up. And then a few penguins noticed this. But the surprising surprisingly, they didn't they didn't run away. Instead, they 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 went they came closer. And Eventually, there are about four or five penguins surrounding Bianca. <laughs> and looking at her. <laughs> looking at this big blue thing. <laughs> and Bianca is like, Commandant, what should I do? <laughs> and Bianca's afraid that her movement would accidentally hurt the penguins. And she, she doesn't know how to to handle the penguins at such a close range. So this is the part you can say, it looks like they look they consider you their kind. Or this one says, "Hello, Bianguin." <laughs> it's actually her name is Bianca, but in Chinese it's like Chianka. It's like a wordplay. Penguin, Bianguin. Bianca says, "Uh." It's a bad habit to give people a nickname, Commandant. <laughs> and she looks at you coldly. And you say, isn't that a good thing? And you say, or this one says, uh, this way you can get a better photo, a clearer photo. And Bianca says, However, I didn't think that they wouldn't be afraid of me. <laughs> and you say, This could be, you can call this uh, animal instinct. <clears throat> Their instincts. And she says, It, with that logic, and with, and since, uh, just like the commander that's always been with me, He's no different from the penguins. So should I call you Commandguin instead? <laughs> and you're like, I never thought that the counterattack would come so fast. <laughs> so quick. <laughs> and you're like, that's right. Uh since this opp opportunity is hard to get, do you want to take a photo with the penguins? And she says, a photo with the penguins? <clears throat> it says, uh, you say, one or two shot should be fine. She says, understood. And she says, uh, I'll leave it to you, Commandant. So she carefully, she carefully squats down to be with the penguins, and the penguins are really looking at her with a uh, curiosity. Uh, every movement, every movement that Bianca does made them more curious, like they would go closer until they're really close, like uh, right next to her. <coughs> And one of the penguins tried to bite her finger. But they but it looks like the penguin noticed that the it's it's really hard. <laughs> and so it quickly let go. <laughs> Bianca laughed. So at this very moment, when she's uh, when she's laughing, you say, Bianca, look at the camera. She's like, huh? And when she looks up while laughing, you snap a photo. It's like, I got it. <laughs> she's 
She says, Commandant, normally shouldn't you count count down from three before you take a photo? And you're like, this it's nicer this way. Bianca says, give me the camera, Commandant. <laughs> and Bianca sh she stands up and smiles and reaches out. But it looks like the smile has some other intention and you say it's it's gonna be unfortunate if you delete it and she says i have no plans on deleting it it's just that uh wouldn't you want to take photo with the penguins as well commandant <clears throat> uh i don't think it's good if only i get to enjoy it and you say and you say yeah actually i i feel like it so you hand Bianca the camera And then uh, you, you uh, When you walk towards the penguins <laughs> The penguins start chirping They started leaving Bianca And they just returned to their group <laughs> Ignoring you <laughs> They just went back to their group and one of them just fell, tripped and fell. <laughs> and you're like, no. <laughs> and Bianca's just smirked at you. She's like, <laughs> and you say, although it's it's been an instant, like a flash of an uh, uh like a flash. A really in a uh, really short moment you notice that Bianca placed her hands over her mouth and stealthily laughed at you but when you turn around she's back to her normal demeanor <laughs> she's like it's too bad commandant Looks like the penguins hate you. <laughs> and she, you say, uh, you, you think that her tone is, is too normal. You, you can't tell if, the, if she's mocking you or she's consoling you. <laughs> and you say, now I don't feel, now I don't think they're cute anymore. Or it's not like I wanted to take a photo anyway. <laughs> she says, uh, it looks like you'll have to wait next time. <clears throat> and she says, uh, we're still on the clock. Let's take photos of what we need to take for the mission. Uh, their resting time is almost over. So, you notice that in the group of penguins, one of the penguins left the group and is walking in a different direction towards, uh, towards, uh, mount, uh, uh, icebergs. And you say, what's up with that penguin? And Bianca says, <clears throat> Uh, the expedition team has told me before When the penguins are migrating this sort of ph uh, phenomenon happens some occasionally There'll be penguins that leave the group and walk towards elsewhere And they'll just keep going uh, Iceberg after icebergs until they they die of hunger and people were trying to find what causes this <clears throat> like why do they keep going uh why do they keep heading to another direction so you ask why why why, why do they do this and she says uh she shakes her head and says 
It may be lots of things. Uh, like the... Uh, the environment changes. The weather. Lots of, lots of guesses by humans. But nobody can arrive to an answer. So why? Why do they walk to their death? No companion, no food, no rest. They just keep walking until they die. No end. And Bianca says, I think that they're not actually, they're not seeking death. And you say, Bianca? And he say, she says that it's it's more like they're looking for something. But it's not with the group. Uh, it's not... Uh, they can't realize it if they're in a group. So they, they leave the group and walk on their own. And Bianca raises her arm and points at the horizon where the icebergs are. And she says, uh, who knows, maybe there, there's also something that they want to see. And she apologizes that she says too much and uh, she says, to, uh, to understand what the animal thing is, is arrogant. Like, you don't really know. Like, you can't try to explain everything. It's arrogance. So she say, let's go, Commandant. Uh, if we stay here for too long, we might not make it for the next mission. So... You, before you left, you look at the penguin that's heading in a different direction. And you decided to not take a photo of this. Alright, number six. The best one. Wait. We're at number six, right? Then we do number five. Okay, yeah. Number six. This is the best one. So it's only uh, in the darkness of nights you can see all the stars in space. So Bianca says, uh, uh, sorry, Commandant, for asking you uh, to accompany me at this time. So you and Bian Bianca are standing in an open field, snowy plains. And you say, it's like racing against the sun. Because Antarctica is different from the rest of the world Where there's only a little Short hours of day daylight The polar day and polar night So like a uh, night time Night time would only last five or six hours so, <clears throat> it's hard to observe the stars. And Bianca says, the past few days, we didn't have much uh, time to, to go out at night. 
as you say, because uh, we're we've already we've always been busy in the day. And you say, uh, I don't know. It's it says here that you've you've been with Bianca for almost uh, for for more than two weeks now. It's almost the time to go back with the transport craft. And the uh, the repair for the lantern bearer ship is already finishing. In about half a month more, it'll be finished. So, their job has been easier now, so the captain let, uh, decided to let you and Bianca uh, have free time for the last few days. So on one of those days, uh, when, it, when it's almost night, uh, Bianca raised a suggestion to go to this uh, elevated plains and enjoy the stars and Bianca says three more days and we'll go back to Babylonia the expedition captain has no more uh, work for us and Bianca says although we're just temporary temporary uh, staff if possible I would like to see it to the end for their ship and you can also say, uh, seeing the ship finish would be so good. <laughs> and Bianca says, uh, yeah, it's a small, it's a, it's a pity. And Bianca says, however, I feel that we know I, it's, uh, I have already been very fortunate. She says we at first, and then she says I already very fortunate. For the past half a month, I can be. Uh, this is the time where I am. Uh, this is the longest time where I am not uh, going as my identity as a purification squad. Just Bianca, not the captain of purification squad. This is the longest time she she got to enjoy. It's like a breath of fresh air. So she feel uh, she says I feel really fortunate that uh, that I have the commandant by my side. And you say, regardless of whether it's purification or not, I think that Bianca would always be serious about her job. And she says, it's not that I'm not happy with my job. More like, I'm happy that I joined Purification Squad. There are some things that, uh, uh, by being Purification Squad, that you can see clearly. And there are some objective that only Purification can uh, achieve. And she says that everything that has happened so far to her has been like a dream. And once she returns, once they return to Babylonia, she's going to be, she's going to back to Cap Bianca, captain of the purification squad. And you will go back as commandant of Grey Raven uh, as your identity. Wow, this is like, you actually want to be with her now. <laughs> Look at the silence. And Bianca says, however, before that, let's, uh, let's have a good ending to this dream. And Bianca closes her eyes. And you're saying, what are you referring to? What, <laughs> what this ending referring to? And she, she says, shh. And she puts her finger on her mouth. Tells you to stay quiet. And she says, it's almost time. 
Just wait a bit more. And just like, uh, just as if Bianca said, uh, uh, perform a spell. Under the night sky, lots of uh, bright lights lit up. Like dawn. It's, it's the moment when night transits to day. The very specific moment when night transits to day in uh, the Ar Antarctica. It's the diamond dust. Oh, here we go. Yeah, there it is, the diamond dust. And you're saying, this is... She says, uh, the captain of the expedition squad told her that this phenomenon happens. Something to do with temperature and humidity. Under the, the light sunlight, so they will sparkle like diamonds. And she says uh, she doesn't want to explain too much or else it'll spoil it. Diamond dust. She says, uh, <clears throat> what do you think, Commandant? She looks at you. And you said, uh, so it's all for this? Like, you, you, you called me out for this? And she says, normally, uh, I would usually r refuse this sort of thing. But for just for this time, please indulge my selfishness. This place that would never happen again, uh, this, this sacred place belongs to you and me. And once, uh, what, just one more step, when we take one more step, we will be going back to our paths. <clears throat> and maybe, uh, this is like their crossroads, like you and Bianca got to be together. And after that, you'll be on the different paths again. And she says, just like the penguin that we saw before, me and Commandant, we have our own uh, destination. So yeah, no matter the ob obstacle, we sh we should never give up. But. Uh, I, I couldn't help myself that I want to leave a place in my heart. She says, uh, this is not what every others would experience. This will be our first and last memory. And she chose this place to mark it. She'll, yeah, she'll use this place to mark your her first and last memory with you and she says even if this cost you some trouble she won't be sorry for it she won't apologize for it and you can feel that bianca is like defiant when she said it and you say wait Even though it, uh, it's not about troubling, I'm, I have to make a correction. She says, correction? And you take out uh, your camera and you, show, you, you turn it on and you show it to her. So your camera has hundreds of photos and you flip through the photos. Some photos is photos that you took with Bianca. Some is, uh, Alone, some is just Bianca, all kinds of photos. 
And then uh, you flip to a particular photo and you show it to Bianca. And she sees a photo and she <clears throat> she was stunned. It's a group of uh, emperor penguins. Or specifically the group of emperor penguins huddled together with the the that the stray penguin that uh, went off from the group earlier. The whole group went with went with the stray penguin together. You got the photo of it. So they were heading for the same iceberg. Because if you remember in the previous chapter, the phenomenon where the stray a penguin would stray off from the group and wander alone until they die. But you got the photo where the group also went with the stray penguin together. So you say that their paths are not parallel lines that will never meet. And you say, Bianca, what you said was right. Our roads are different. Our paths are different. And you say, uh, and you think that as a task force commandant, pre pretending to understand uh, Bianca as a purification squad would be insincere. Because one is working in the, the behind the scenes, one is working in the front lines. You say, perhaps one day, uh, Perhaps we'll f uh, one day we'll fight. Perhaps one day I'll have to meet Bianca. Uh, in a like like if in in case one day she has to kill you or something something like that. Perhaps one day. Yeah, one day we'll have to be full of resolve and draw our blades. But I also believe uh, in the future. Uh, we'll we'll meet again. You're you're. Sh uh, it says that you 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 correct yourself. Like I'm I'm sure. Uh, she will be waiting for, for us to meet again. To a place that we can go together. We'll uh, we'll cross path, countless times. So after listening to everything you say, Bianca is silent. <laughs> she says, you're, you're just too good with words. <laughs> Speech 1000. <laughs> and she says, uh, yes, our paths will meet in the future again. And she says, it seems like you're, you're, you're just not saying it as if it's a pipe dream, like fantasy. You're serious about it. This courage. How many people would uh, would want this sort of courage? So no matter what Bianca thinks. Uh, so you say no matter what Bianca thinks, this one last. It, it's not very fitting. Like when she says first and last uh, memory, or this one says, I only recognize the first part, not the last part. First and last memory, so we can go over the second one. <laughs> She's like, "Oh, I can't, you can't be helped." I, <laughs> she says, "Uh, yeah, commandant can be helped." <laughs> and she sighed. Oh shit! And this part, she says, "Speaking of which, commandant, do you still remember on the transport ship when I said that?" why I had another personal reason when uh, I asked you to come with me at that time had you considered to uh, had you chose to push for the answer I probably would have made up an excuse because at that time I couldn't understand why I had that impulse 
what was the source of it. But until uh, but until now, I still couldn't figure out why. But I'm not afraid to say it anymore. And she takes a deep breath, places her hand on her chest. The reason, I could say, there is no reason. And you say, no reason? And she says, uh, thinking about it. Uh, when I was thinking about it, the request has already been sent to the command post to ask for the commandant to come. And she says, I tried, I tried many times to try to, re to reason it, to apply logic. She says, excuses can be used to, excuses can be used to uh, tell other people, but you can't use it to lie to yourself. And she says, it's strange. I've, I've given up on things many times before, but for this thing, I, I don't know why it's so hard to give up. But now it should be fine. That reason, uh, it's not like something that I need. It's not that, uh, reason is not something that you need to find. She says, I'm sorry, commandant. Uh, until, until just now, I, I tried to lie to you. No, lie to myself. I couldn't find a reason to console myself or I don't feel like finding it anymore. So if I really needed to find a way to explain this impulse, I can answer you uh, with one thing. Just like that famous explorer, uh, what? Uh, just like what that ex famous explorer said, because you are here. And after finishing saying, she takes a deep breath and lets go. And she says, uh, after saying it out loud, it feels like a, it feels so light now. Letting it go. So she clears her throat and goes back to her normal demeanor. <laughs> she says, Commandant, I know you wanted I I know you want to say something. But please be a gentleman and st stay silent <laughs> and process what I just said, okay? <laughs> you can stay silent or you can laugh. <laughs> I chose laugh. <laughs> she says, "Oh, that's right. Dim the diamond dust. Diamond dust is already finishing." She says, "Uh, since it's hard, hard to, it's rare. Commandant, do you want to take a photo, uh, as remembrance?" like okay so you take a photo with Bianca under the diamond dust and you say <clears throat> it's not uh, everything doesn't need to be everything doesn't need this form to be remembered because things that you will never forget is not uh it's already preserved in your in your heart you don't need cameras to remember these it'll be forever preserved in your heart she's like okay i got the photo
Oh, shit. And then you say... Okay, regarding uh, the memories next time. We can't rely on uh, the camera to remember everything. And then you, you, you tap your heart and you tell her that we'll keep it here instead. It's a promise. Uh, we, we made a promise. And then Bianca's like, next time, huh? She's like, oh, really? Oh, you, Commandant. <laughs> it feels like you're in a rush for it. She says, but thank you. And it's a promise, Commandant. So good, right? Tender moment with waifu. <clears throat> this one's uh, the day of return. The transport ship is here. So the the expedition team made a farewell party for you. <clears throat> they they've really grown on you. And this guy's crying. He's like, "Oh, I never thought that you would be going already." She's and then she's like, "Ah, oh, I don't re I don't want you to go. <laughs> I still want to listen to more of the things that you did." And the task force. And then you gave everyone a big hug. And you say that although they have been in the Antarctica for so many years, their their warmth and friendliness has never changed. Has never uh, re uh, re has never been reduced. Never changed. And then the captain's like. Stop crying, you guys. <laughs> and he says, uh, although the time is short, but our our time has been fun. You and Miss Bianca has really helped us. <clears throat> and he says, w w once you guys beat Punishing, I hope we can meet again. And you can say, uh, you guys too. And you say that uh, you think that this this captain guy was actually a scientist, but for the sake of research, he became a construct. <clears throat> and so they really respect him. And you say although that they they aren't soldiers, and they're not working night and day for to fight against punishing, research against punishing. But they're still a really important part of humanity's efforts. Silently working here. And he says, that's right. The photos in the camera. We still need to upload it to <clears throat> the science division, the database. And he says, of course, if you have some photos that you want to keep, it's also no issue. And he says, Goodbye, Commandant of Grey Raven. And then, uh, he, was, uh, he also reaches out his arm and gives you a really big hug. And then, uh, <clears throat> after you say your farewells to them, you take out the camera and start uploading. And then uh, you scroll through all the photos, lots of photos from the past half a month. And then you, you, you scroll till the photo up where, uh, about the penguin. And you, you still don't know why. Why did the penguins behave this way? 
There's no way to understand it. And just like the penguin that you saw with Bianca, you don't know whether that penguin went back to the group after that. It's something that you will never uh, for uh, you will never understand. You will never know. And if you try to explain it, it's just to console yourself. It, it could be that it could be that the penguin was just looking for the safe path for the group to tell them where where it's safe to go. It could be that it it accidentally walked ahead of the group. Or it could be that this penguin doesn't belong to the group. So you you'll never know. But you say uh, you say so what? <clears throat> Uh, wishing there's no need to find out uh, what what it means uh, what's important is if you found your answer your own answer and Bianca's like a uh, commandant are you still not done so Bianca pushes the door and comes in uh, are you confirming the photos? I can help you. The transport craft is waiting for us. You say no, it's already done. Let's go. Go back to Babylonia. She says okay. She smiles and takes a bow and turns around and starts walking out of the room. And then uh, you carefully place the uh, terminal in your coat. <clears throat> and you put the camera on the table for the expedition team to uh, retrieve it later. And then uh, the next thing, you, you, qu uh, you quicken your pace to catch up to Bianca. And then the figure in front of you heard your. It, uh, it's as if she heard your your heart, and she slowed down for you. Wow. She knows, and she slowed down for you to catch up. That's the end of Bianca's Bond story. So long.